Live from Nice, France, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Conference 2017 Europe. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and you're watching theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media's independent live broadcast of Nutanix.next here in Nice, France. Happy to have joined with me, uh, first time guest, John McAdam, who's the former CEO of F5 and an independent board member uh, for a, a number of companies, including F5, Tableau, uh, and Nutanix, uh, the, the, the show that we're at. Mm -hmm. So John, thanks so much for joining us. No, thank you, thanks for having me. All right, so uh, let's start just for, for, for people who aren't familiar. Uh, I said you, you know, you're know you CEO of F5 uh, you know, for, for a, a, a few, quite a few years. Right. Uh, just give us a little bit about you know, your background uh, in business and uh, yeah. you know, what, what, what brings you here. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, uh, I graduated from Glasgow University, you probably can tell from the accent, yes. I'm Scottish. Yes. Um, I moved over to the States uh, when I joined a company called Sequent in 1994 and I became president of Sequent in 1995 and actually been in the States since then, up until uh, I retired in April this year. So I spent 11 years at Sequent, uh, president and chief operating officer, uh, big server company is, is what we did at the time, yeah. mainly selling Oracle type databases running on the servers. Well, we were purchased, we were acquired by IBM in 99. Uh, I, I stayed with IBM for a year I was running the AIX business globally for IBM. Wow, yeah. And then uh, I was headhunted by F5 Networks and uh, I joined them in 2000, just as the dot-com uh, bust uh, was about to happen. And we'll talk about that ma later maybe. Yeah. And uh, I was uh, the CEO at uh, F5 for 17 years. Wow. And uh, during the last few years, I uh, joined the board of Tableau, as you mentioned, and a company called Aptio as well, based in, in Seattle, and of course, Nutanix. Yeah, so a, a lot of our audience are, you know, everything from you know, CIOs to people that someday might want to be a, you know, a CIO, but very much kind of a mix of a blend of business and technology. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell people, that some people are like, I don't understand how somebody becomes an independent board member. So you're, you're not yeah. you know, the former CEO of that company, yeah. or you're, you're not you know, one of the things, what, what does it mean to be an independent board member? You know, it's an interesting yeah. story because yeah. I, uh, uh, the board member, the, the, the board, the independent board members at F5 yeah. actually kept encouraging me to join a board. Yeah. And I kept saying, no, I don't need to do that. I'm really busy focusing the company. And also I've been a board member since 1995 as an executive, you know, yeah. so a board member of Sequent and a board member of F5, so why would I want to join a board? Yeah. And then eventually uh, I actually got uh, approached, first of all by Tableau, the CEO of Tableau at the time, and, and um, it seemed a very interesting conversation. So I, you know, I decided to join the board. I, you know, it was pre-IPO, um, and uh, I thought I could add some value there in terms of growing the company, etc. So I went along to the first board meeting, and I went to the second, and I came back to the F5 board, and I said, "I am really, I apologise. I should have done this earlier. I haven't, I didn't appreciate how much I would realise and learn being at the other side of the table as an independent board member. Because remember, you're turning up once every three months or two months. You don't know the day-to-day -day what's going on, but you have a very different perspective. And I wish I had done it earlier, but really, it's all about trying to give consultancy, support, advice. Obviously, there's governance things you do as well. Uh, and I've really enjoyed being on the boards, and especially in Nutanix. Okay, uh, it, it, your career, you know, we, we've had, you know, I, I think about since the time you joined F5, I mean, we've had, you know, <laughs> there was the dot-com crash, there was the, you know, the downturn in 07, 08, yeah. uh, so you've seen some boom times, you've seen, seen some down times. W what do you take away for those, and, and, and how do you help yeah. advise the companies that you're working yeah, with? Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. It's been an interesting uh, experience. Uh, when I joined, as I mentioned earlier, it was a dot-com about to crash happening. And uh, the, the big issue for F5 was it was actually 90% dot-com business. Yeah. So the revenue collapsed completely, the stock price dropped uh, from uh, today's price, uh, from $21 to a dollar and a half. Um, you know, we run out of cash in certain areas, we ended up uh, selling off 10% of the com company uh, to actually Nokia, they, they took ownership. So it was very much a survival phase. And in that phase, you really have to, you know, you need to make quick decisions. Um, there's no time for as, you know, the coaching that you would normally do. It's not as inspirational. Um, but once you're out of it, once you get the, the, the P&L and, and you know, the profit and loss and the balance sheet in good shape, then we moved into what I would call stability 
uh, that's the stability phase. And, and the deal there was that we, we really were building a new architecture or product. We knew it was going to take a couple of years. So that's all about making sure that, that, that you're in a good environment, you, you're, you're going to deliver the goods from a market perspective. And we did that. And in, it, I remember this well, in September 2004, we announced a new version, a new architecture, boom, we jumped into the growth mode. 50% yeah. um, growth, not quite as much as Nutanix today, but 50, 55, 40%. That's different, that's an inspirational world, you know, where you're really trying to inspire the company, it's all about hiring, it's, you know, it's, and it's fun. Yeah, um, it, it's interesting, how, how much do companies, when you, you advise them, worry about kind of what's happening to them versus you know what what's happening kind of you know locally and globally from an economic standpoint i know i you know i talked to diraj many times kind of leading up to the ipo and it was like well <laughs> we have no control over kind of the global economical pieces yeah. so you know we're building for the long term and we will just eventually have to be like okay we'll go out in the public market you, you know you can't just like buying and selling stocks you can't necessarily time it so how does that impact uh, you know kind of balance some of those things yeah with, with I mean the best through. example is 2008 yeah. uh, 2008 2009 yeah. um, where we had the financial crisis and and as I mentioned we were very much in growth phase in 2004 five six seven. Interesting enough, as we were moving into 2008, the timing wasn't great because we were doing a product transition and then along came the, the financial crisis and it was pretty mind-boggling. In, in, in the, the, the end of 2008, December 2008, customers stopped buying. Um, and we went, at first we thought, oh my God, is this just us? And of course, pretty soon, moving into January 2009, you, you realize it's not you. So we didn't ignore it. Th to be honest, we didn't ignore it, but what we did do was we kept hiring. We cut back a little bit on the hiring, you know, um, and in fact, I wish we hadn't have done that. I wish we'd have completely ignored it. And the reason, and of course, this is me now looking back, so I can say that. The reason I'm saying I wish we hadn't ignored it and kept growing was only six months after moving into the, the second half of 2009, not only did we see our business start to grow again, but it accelerated because there was a, 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 a demand had built up. Uh, during that time. So bottom line is I don't think you can ignore global issues going on. You certainly can't ignore um, you know, big global issues like 2008, but you still have to focus on what you know as your business, if, especially if you know you've got a good market, you know there's a demand, and just see yourself through it. Yeah, uh, you, you mentioned uh, one of the companies you joined was, was pre-IPO uh, from, from an advisor standpoint. Have you been a Nutanix uh, advisor since before the IPO? I have, I've, I've actually had the unique uh, yeah. experience of being on Tableau pre-IPO, yeah. Uh, Nutanix pre-IPO and also Aptio, yeah. all pre-IPO. So I've watched the three of them going through the IPO so, process. So of course, you know, Diraj, you know, tries to say, look, you know, I'm not going to let Wall Street kind of dictate anything, but you know, it has to be a little bit different when you've got uh, kind of the you know the financial people uh, looking at things from the outside, always trying to second guess you know strategy and the like. Yeah. Uh, how do you give advice? Uh, through yeah, that? My, my advice on this is, and it is somewhat different. To say it's not different would you know wouldn't be completely correct. However. You, sh you can't let Wall Street run your business. You can't, especially if you've got conviction in terms of what you're doing. The, the one area where you, you do need to be a bit careful is that, it's, you know, the, 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 the thing I've always said when I was CEO of F5 was, you know, our, 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 our business is all about, when I was asked about, you know, do you think you could be acquired? The answer has always been from me the following. We're focused on the business. We're fo focused on growing a company. When you do that, you become more strategic and attractive to other companies. But as long as you keep growing, your market cap keeps high and you keep going. Right. If your market cap drops with the stock price, you, you know, there's always a danger that you could become an acquisition target. So you can't ignore it completely. But frankly, both those messages are win-wins for investors. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what can you say about Nutanix? Uh, you know, year after an IPO, uh, you know, 2,800 employees, you know, pushing globally, you know, this, this show's doubled in attendance yeah. uh, for, from last year, uh, you know, uh, w w without getting into to closed doors things, uh, you know, what, 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 what's, your, what's your take on yeah, Nutanix? Yeah, and as an independent yeah. director, I have to be yeah. more generic, but clearly, fast growing company and a great market, a leader in, in the, the, you know, the, the, the hyper convergent market. Uh, I love their concept of simplicity, you know, invisible infrastructure. I think that, 
you know, that's a place that customers want to be right now. So I think they're in good, really good position. Yeah, uh, what, what, what in the market is interesting you th these days? I look across kind of the companies you work with, you know, data is becoming, you know, yeah. more and more valuable. You know, I spent many years working for a large storage company, it used to be, it wasn't really about the data, it was about the storing. Mm -hmm. um, and now, you know, data from the big data companies, you know, everything else, it's about how do I leverage and get information out. You know, we're hearing Nutanix play into that message. Yeah, and, and you know. really it's the, the three main areas, data, you know, data in particular, the cloud. Yeah. Uh, I'm, give, no, I'm not going to give you anything new here. Yeah. And security. Okay. They're the three hot topics well, today. And, and, and the three of those are twisted in a knot. They're are they all not? linked yeah. together. Um, yeah, I, we just interviewed a, a gentleman from, from, from a bank and he said basically, all of our budget gets put on security these days. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, is there, what, what, what concerns you is the kind of the, you know, the geopolitical, you know, that the hackers and ransomware, you know, security, uh, I, I think back early in my career, security always got lip service yeah. as being important. Uh, but today, it, it absolutely comes to, mm. to front of mind, and uh, totally. you know most companies I talk to are uh, concerned would probably be understating it as absolutely. to kind of the state of security. No, absolutely. Mm. I mean, it, it's touching everybody now. Uh, boards, independent board members, sure. it's high up on the list of, of uh, discussion topics at board meetings. Um, you know, it, it, every company is vulnerable, and if you're a technology company that's got customer data, and you're in the security business as well, yeah. you know, you, you really have to uh, make sure that you're you're well protected. Yeah, uh, you know, how often is security a board level discussion these days? Uh, most board members, yeah. most board discussions, and certainly in the audit committee, it's almost every one nowadays. Yeah. Um, what, what 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 has to happen there? Are Making you just, sure yeah. that there's been you know there's, it's, it's being looked at properly by by the executives that they take it seriously. There's enough investment, you know all you know making sure that, that all the tools are in place. Uh, if there is an attack, all of the above. Yeah. Um, do you touch on GDPR at all? I'm curious if that, that comes up in your no, conversations. No, I haven't been involved so. in that much. I mean, I, I, yeah. I know there's a breakout session on it sure. today, but I've not been involved in that. Yeah, it, it just reminds me of a similar thing is uh, people, the, the people have said, you need to make sure you're doing your due diligence and doing as much as you can, right. uh, which feels like the same for security, because there's, you know, nobody's going to say, yes, I'm 100% secure, no, uh, I, because I, there, there's no such thing anymore. There's no <laughs> such thing, and there's so many different attacks, and frankly, most companies have got solutions security solutions from so many different vendors, even sometimes from your competitor. All right, uh, so uh, the last thing I have to say is I, I don't think we've ever done theCUBE in Scotland, and you know, it's a beautiful country, so <laughs> um, you know, we got to figure out how, you know, how, to, how to do some small event there. So, yeah, uh, I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, John, I want to give you the final word. Uh, your, your take, you come to, you know, why do you attend? Obviously you're an independent board, but you probably have some meetings, but t talk to us about you know, a, a show like this, what brings Yeah, and, you? and this is the first one I've, I've attended. I've yeah. actually attended uh, one similar with Tableau. Uh, and uh, 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 similar with Aptio as well. So I like to do, it's good for an independent board member to see some of the presentations, how the, the executives are and, and management are talking to customers. So it's actually good to get more of a feel for the business. All right, well John McAdam, appreciate you bringing a different perspective to uh, you know, our programming. Uh, we always want to help uh, give a taste of what's happening at these shows out to our audience. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE.